Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about a quick Hero Siege guide. Um, this is going to be covering new players basically entering Inferno difficulty um, slash people who are still in hell but want something to farm. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump right on into it. Hero Siege is really difficult with like what is the best because since the community is so small, the more people farm one thing, the less effective it becomes in terms of money because of what drops there. So a lot of this, you know, I'm going to give you guys a couple different strategies and you can kind of decide which one you want. So I farm in Inferno 3. You should never really bump this difficulty up unless you are clearing super fast and have no problem at all. It's a lot better to kill quickly than it is to slowly kill on a higher difficulty. So let me just go ahead and jump in. Also, you can totally run um, the difficulty slider on 5 in Hell, as long as it doesn't really hurt you much. So uh, this build is going to go a little bit fast. I'm not really going to cover the character right now, but if, if you can't follow along, I do apologize. So the first area is going to be um, Desert, so it's 3-3. Three, three. Let's just call it that because 1-2-3, boom. Okay. So from here, we are simply looking for um, the dungeon. If you guys are unaware of how dungeons work, um, dungeons look like this and are set to specific areas. So in this one, we're going to go ahead and jump in Forgotten City. So I start with a loop down around the south side, then connect up. This is about 500 rubies or so, uh, maybe like 400 rubies. Oh, nice. Satanic. 400 rubies for doing this in hell difficulty, but you can run it very, very quickly. The reason why I don't recommend this for Inferno is any of the dungeons you've done in Hell, when you do them in Inferno, they actually require a dungeon key. So for this one, it was the... Um, let's see which key is it. For this, you would need the Mystic Key. So when you're doing um, this content in Inferno, it's a lot easier to get it with a group. So each guy gets one key, and then like I would open it for the whole group. Um, and then we would run it, and then we would just immediately vote reset after we're done. So this is the chest you get in Inferno. In the previous difficulty, you don't get this chest, but nonetheless, it's still worth running. And see, that's like 2,000 rubies. And then you would simply reset, and then you would jump right back in there with your next person. All right, so for people who are entering Hell, I'm going to give you a couple different things you can do. Um, the first one I'm going to state is better for XP. And remember, you want to run this on the slider all the way to the left. You don't want to add difficulty unless you can handle it. So areas that have bosses are extremely compact, extremely dense, which means some of your best places at Satanic drops. So let's go to King's Garden. Now it's important to note that each act contains different keys for different things. So for Desert that you guys just saw, if I were to run the boss for Desert instead, which is Pyramid, I would get keys for um, the thing I just ran, which is the mystic key here. Cellar key, tower key, and smelly cheese are all for act one. Um, one of these keys are broken. I forgot which one. The other one is for act two. And then rusted key is for the abandoned mine in act four. We're just looking for our red portal. Now, when it comes to the uh, the keys, every single one of them in Inferno is going to have a reward chest like you saw there at the end. However, the black tower keys or the, the tower keys actually have a chest that contains runes. Um, a lot of a lot of runes are very uh, no, they're not they don't contain boss runes but they can contain inferno runes which is really good some of the runes in there can vary anywhere from 10k to 50k but that also very much depends on the market price at the time uh, and what is going on so i like to run these boss areas because they're super super dense as you guys can see when it's uh fresh into a season i'm pretty sure this is the best xp you can get until you get geared for wormholes it's also completely free, meaning you don't spend anything to run this content. So everything you're getting is just pure profit. Um, so for farming uh, quickly like this, there's two things you want to make sure you have. Well, maybe more than two. So in your relics, you want to make sure you have Horn Mask. 
which gives you friends with demons, which makes demon statues always positive. You're looking for the speed buff from the demon statues along with the XP gain, which is really nice. Another thing that helps is having a loot pet. Mine is the free one for verifying your account. This just makes it so as you're zooming through, it's prioritizing picking up your rubies so you don't have to backtrack. And the last thing, just quality of life really, is getting magnet. Uh, magnet just increases the vacuum rate of pulling in coins and rubies more so specifically. So doing the bosses now in hell difficulty, not only do you get good XP and good, you get okay rubies, um, but bosses have a very, very, very rare chance um, to drop a boss-specific satanic set. I'm guessing it's it's less than 1% as they're... I don't know if they're ever on the auction house. I don't really look for them. But I've done well over 100 act bosses on Inferno, and I've never seen one drop yet. Ruby, sorry, it's hard to slow it down with the duck insta picking stuff up. Now, also by doing those guys, um, you also get a chance at their basically their boss part. I think to summon Uber Damien, I believe it's one of each of these, which is really nice. So we talked about farming this in hell. Um, you can also farm the dun like the uh, act bosses in hell, but I've personally never done that, so I'm not really sure how beneficial that is. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is doing, essentially farming open world zones and what the benefit is of them. So we're going to farm Mining Village 1 and Highland Mines, so that's 4-1 and 4-2. So the first thing I like to do is try to do a quick loop around the outskirts of the town. Now this place is unique and there is almost always a boss shrine um, leading to the next zone. That boss shrine has a 5% chance I believe to roll as a chaos shrine instead which will have a pentagram on the map. The Chaos Shrine is the last league, so Season 10's league mechanic, uh, which is really, really, really good um, for money. It just gives a bunch of random shit, essentially. Some of them can be very, very good. It can give you random satanics. It can open uh, key dungeons uh, in Inferno to other, like basically so you don't have to spend a key. You can get like a bunch of ore. Uh, it's just very, very, very beneficial to run. And then usually when you do that, you would get a group of people. So you would just like advertise you have a cow shrine, your group fills up, and that's kind of like a little rotation, except it's not really a rotation. I also like doing this rotation here though, because you get guaranteed like 100 to 200 rubies at the end of each boss. And bosses have maybe a 0.02 chance at giving you a boss rune, uh, which could go upwards of like 4 mil with the current market price with people price fixing stuff. So there's the other soul you can see right here. I'm just gonna tap that. The best part about this one is since you're not really killing too many monsters, it's actually not that important to bump up the Inferno difficulty here because while we're doing this open world farming, we're also gonna be looking for something called a Chaos Tower, which is the there we go, which is the current league mechanic. The Chaos Tower is this gigantic walking tower, which I'm gonna try to force farm one right now uh, and see if it drops, well, basically see if I can get it to spawn. And inside there, you can get essentially some of the best rewards in the game right now, being uh, very high tier boss runes or um, Headhunter, which is Belt of Skulls off of the actual boss himself after 10, uh, 10 Chaos Towers. Then there's simply um, another option where if you just want to be a little bit more lazy of a gamer and not just spam reset everything all the time because it's unfun, you can simply just go through and clear most of the zones. And I'll try to see if I can point out some tricks for you for identifying um, how to like farm a Chaos Tower. Because ideally if you get a Chaos Tower spawn or a Shadow Realm is another option, you're going to just like force reset. So I'm going to jump into here, Act 1. Now. The way this current league mechanic works is if you've killed 50 monsters in a zone, you have a additive 1% chance to spawn a Chaos Tower. So we're somewhere at like 7 or 8% right now. I don't know if it counts all the dungeons in King's Garden. So 
We are going to look and see if this one has Rat Dungeon or Rat Den. If there is no Rat Den, then there's a chance at a Chaos Tower. A Chaos Tower counts as a dungeon spawn, so it cannot spawn with a Rat Den. Same goes for Unstable Rift and for a Shadow Realm. So we're just going to have this peeled. This is not what I mean by dungeon. I mean like... Let's see if I can show it to you. Kind of like what I showed right at the beginning of the video. Unless that somehow took the spawn of the dungeon, but I don't think it's supposed to. Maybe it did? I don't know, this game's still confusing sometimes. I didn't think that was supposed to take over as a dungeon. Weird. Let's see what we got here. There's Pumpkin Patch. I know Pumpkin Patch has his own. Oh, nothing here. So Pumpkin Patch has a dungeon. I'm just confused because the rat one has a dungeon too. Um, if we see the rat, the, basically the icon for the dungeon, then we can just move on because we know that it cannot spawn with a Chaos Tower. Oh, Boss Shrine. Careful. I don't know what Boss Shrine counts. I guess that counts as just a regular shrine. Okay, so there's an unstable rift, so that took over the dungeon spawn. Uh, pretty sure those are just really old content and they're not really worth running from what people tell me. And then the village, let's see. Surprised no Shadow Realm popped up. Usually Shadow Realm pops up pretty fast. King's Garden, we've already been there. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing here. Okay, so this is a dungeon right here. This is the icon. So because we saw the black tower spawn, we know we can't have a shadow realm and we know we can't have a chaos tower. So this is typically the time you would just like kill 50 monsters and then move on if you don't want to do the reset method. And then you would simply go to the next act and you would try to wait until your chaos tower spawns since each of these is adding a 1% chance to basically spawn it. But to be fair, it's much easier in a group to just essentially have uh, each person explore one act and then if it's not found within your acts you just hit vote reset and then you can just like do it all over again until someone finds it typically vote resetting is the more effective way to go through the game right now okay. next zone Oh, that was backwards. Oh, that's okay. So that, that pretty much concludes the uh, the early farming route and what to do from there. I'm not really going to make a video expanding on this. I just wanted to get this out there so people can kind of get a little bit of a direction on where to go and what to do. Um, another big thing that I will include, which I probably should have said 14 minutes ago in this video, but I guess it's already too late, is if you're having damage problems, consider looking for cheap rune words. This is not an example of one, but... Cheap rune words are a nice tier in between satanic and like crazy high up tier uh, equipment and then consider looking for a satanic weapon as one of your first purchases um, entering into inferno so that you can start getting the damage scaling going. Um, a lot of players often go with a two-handed satanic weapon for this reason just because you get a massive amount of base damage scaling from it and then usually your next piece of gear would be your amulet as it rolls a massive increase to um, some type of damage property that you're using for your character. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. I may be able to go sneak out a build video for 
tomorrow. Um, other than that, we've got Godfall coming up on Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah, Thursday, I believe. So pretty excited for that. But you guys have a wonderful time. Take care. If you guys like the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box, except for Sundays. Have a good one.